Okay, so what do you get when you give a peeper growth hormones? A peeper leviathan. Gosh, what is wrong with me? So what is going on guys? Broticus 3.14 here. And this time I am not with the Fammy Crew, Fammy Crew Deluxe channel. I'm all on my own. Nobody's here with me. Okay, forget that. <laughs> anyway, this marks the first episode in my solo YouTube channel. One that I'm thinking I'll probably have to break up into multiple episodes. At any rate, this channel is going to be mostly video game stuff. For right now, I'm just keeping it on um, my phone. Hopefully, I plan to expand to other platforms. But for the time being, I'm just going to be doing custom maps and add-ons in Minecraft Pocket Edition. There is a... Mm, excuse me. And again. There is a bit of a difference. Well, quite a bit of a difference, actually. Between add-ons and mods. I'll go through a brief overview, then I'll shut my face, and we can start. The difference between mods and add-ons is add-ons usually just retexture things such as items, armor, weapons, and at times mobs. They rarely ever add anything new, and if they're really good, it's not just retexturing. Certainly nothing so complicated as the Ore Spawn mod or the Tinker's Construct mod, which I really wish I could play, but I can't, so... <laughs> anyway, oh, also, before I forget, this uh, multi-part series is going to be well, basically when Minecraft meets Subnautica. So if you've never seen that game and don't want any spoilers, you should probably uh, click on that little back arrow up in the top left, assuming you're using that kind of search browser. In any case, let's get into this video, and if you want to see more, subscribe and hit that like button, but don't hit it too hard, you might hurt it. Four six B. Oh, and by the way, the B in this case stands for block. And slowly rendering in that monstrosity of a spaceship, the Aurora. Come on, render in. You're making me look bad. Kind of like that uh, opposite day escape pod over there. Do you not logic, bro? In any case. Let's see what's on the to-do list. And yeah, here we are on my escape pod. And because I knew enough not to leave two screws untightened, I am not suffering from a hand injury and getting salt water in it. Ouch. Anyway. Uh, pardon me. Bit of a stuffy nose. Anyway, assume you can read. Well, can't. We're going to be visiting the mushroom biome, the red grass biome, the kelp forest, which you can see underneath this uh, PDA slash book, I guess. Also, we're going to be visiting the crag field, and even though it's not shown here, gotta visit the aurora. Don't want to win the Mr. Stupid contest on my first episode. Also, we're going to be reviewing what I said about how add-ons retexture things. In case you hadn't noticed, there are some distinct differences with the mobs. So much so, 
There is a, supposed to be a Reaper Leviathan, but it is probably the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in Minecraft. So much so that I call it the Derp Leviathan. In any case, let's get to the mushroom biome. Originally, I had laid out the coordinates because, dang it, I didn't want to have to swim there or whatever, but as I recall, it's somewhere to the north. But actually, for right now, to heck with the book, here is the um, kelp forest. And, oh, look. I think that's like a tropical stop it, fish or something, which is supposed to be a peeper. And hey, it's got that cute little beak thing. Aren't cephalopods supposed to have beaks? Well, you know, if you... I think parrotfish technically do, but... And I'm not being ridiculous. Oh, and these weird cyclops-looking things. I think those are either cod or salmon. Retextured to look like bladderfish. Scientific fact. Fish have swift bladders that allow them to move up or down. Much like how a submarine does. But hey, I, I'm not building like the science guy. Now, for right now... Yeah, it's uh, supposed to be... That's a dolphin retextured as a... Uh, gasopod. Thankfully, minus the gas. For right now, we won't see any crashers or hostile mobs because... Actually, we should because crashers don't technically count as hostile mobs. Or do they? They're retextured puffer fish, so anyway. Yeah, right. Not sure what that's not sure what that's supposed to be. Some of these items I think I can name for you. Maybe. This is I think supposed to be like uh Gabe's feathers are found down in the lost river in that area, so. Anyway. Here we have some wreckage from the Aurora. I like how in some places they gave it little red particles, well, pixels. And I like it's still hot or irradiated. And, excuse me, peeper. Yeah, so just to clarify, this is not a Pokeball. It is actually a chest. This world is designed to work more or less like a survival world where you have to scavenge for resources, and I do believe that's the actual wording of the PDA, or scavenge for resources. Oh, hey, there's another escape pod in the red grass, which I guess we'll move on to. One thing I do want to mention, I've never actually used a mod because I've rarely ever played Minecraft PC, but if you download a... Ooh, is that a crasher? Nope, that has not been textured. Anyway, if you do want to download add-ons, A, you'll need both a behavior pack and a resource pack. However, downloading the resource packs will make it so that the game itself cannot have achievements. Ooh, hey, there's the floating island. Anyway... Also, actually, I think that was it for the add-ons and such. Anyway, oh, here we go. I think this is, yes, I know I know this is a rabbit ray, a retextured turtle. But if, I think you can actually see a rabbit ray the first time you exit your um, escape pod from the bottom. Oop, there's a jelly shroom. So things like the floating island, the Grand Reef, and um, the jelly shrooms and biomes that are deeper, such as the Lost River and the Lava Zones, those will be covered in later episodes. I don't like how it automatically goes up. I wonder if that could be fixed by disabling the auto jump. So anyway, the, um, the escape pods all look like this on the inside. There's another one that's a... Well, you know, help. Anyway, so this is what a crafting table looks like. For some reason, this is what I would... If I were to see this, I would actually think it would be a furnace. 
given the large black opening, and the fabricator would look, or the modification station. I haven't actually played Subnautica myself, but I've watched my favorite YouTuber do it, so, yeah. Oh, one thing you may want to watch out for, should you try this on, um, survival? It works like actual Subnautica and the fun blathering on. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. Ah, red grass biome. And over there's the mushroom forest. Anyway. I forgot what I was saying. Oh yes, if you try and play this like a survival world, it will, you'll need higher tiers of armor to get deeper, like in the real game. If not, you won't get crushed by the pressure, but the you'll get poison status that will stack and do quite a bit of damage over time. And while I know poison can't actually kill you, I think if you get deep enough, you may get a wither or decay status, which can kill you. Anyway, so here we have some more wreckage of the aura. And who taught this guy how to drive? Seriously. Oh, dang it, stuck. That happened a bit. Real blockhead. And this is kind of... Well, in Minecraft, it's hard to detail things like this. Like, I'm not sure. I don't think this is supposed to be the Seamoth thing. I don't know if that's here or actually attached to the Aurora at this point. Anyway... So yeah, it's not actually been... It looks kind of like a, an untextured room, basically. Oh. Excuse me. I'm trying to do a showcase here. Now, I haven't directly seen one, and oh, oh, not just yet. I think we might actually save that for the last episode. That is going to be the, quor is the quarantine enforcement platform. And I will go into greater detail on some of the mobs, especially the hostile mobs, because even though they haven't, they don't have enough to retexture things for all the mobs, um, they still have quite a few, so and we have some of those. I don't know if those are bulbo bushes or if those actually grow on the floating island. Anyway. Now that I think about it, these signs, I laid out signs in various areas. So yeah, welcome to the mushroom forest. Man, wonder what kind of hallucinations these things could cause. Either way. Oh, and I'm a little saddened to say that there are no bone sharks, because even those, though the, even though those things are kind of annoying. They're cool in my book, the way they look like they're segmented, kind of like a centipede. Mm. Excuse you. So here we have some wheat, and that is an <laughs> a med kit is an enchanted golden apple. Okay then. It's really quite incredible. I wonder how many people it took to make this, or if it was just a single person who did it. What's that? Oh, right, that's an entrance to the Lost River. Okay, here we have a macro bush right here. And, um, have you forgotten how to logic? You're welcome. Excuse you too. Where are these guys? The bean night or something? Taco Bell? Anyway, moving more or less, this is not the Cragsfield by nature. It's near it, but not... It's actually underneath the, uh... Aurora. This gives you a bit of a scope on how truly massive it is. I'll show you the inside. I'm glad this isn't actually all that realistic. Hello, particle. Hello. Um, because... Well... Usually you have a one, uh, you have a Reaper Leviathan down here. Apparently drawn here because of the noise. You know what they say? Curiosity froze the Reaper. Well, not anymore. With the full release of the 
of Subnautica, they removed, and this is kind of weird looking, they removed the stasis rifle. Fortunately, in this, that is what the bow has become. Though there's no uh, epic light show. So, back to the red grass, which I think is just stained. It's partly grass and partly stained, I don't know, maybe sand or cement or something. Anyway, yeah, I've n I've only seen bits and pieces, and oop, there's one of the Degassi bases. And I don't know if this leads down. Yes, it does. Well, I've only seen bits and pieces. I don't know what connects to what and such. Because the YouTuber that I watch tends to edit the long treks and the cyclops. So, I don't know how this is. Here we are in the actual crags field. You see, I, what I'm, an example of what I'm saying is, I always thought the crags field was all the way over there. And pretty much not anywhere near the Grand Reef. Now, let's see, I had something marked out. Why did I think that was... Oh, here we go. So, yeah. One of the things that is in this game is an incredibly detailed look into the precursor of civilization. So much so that I believe maybe just one or all three of the precursor item caches can be found here. And by here, I don't mean on this meteor crash site. One thing I do want to also mention Redstone blocks, if you collect them, and they look very strange, are, um, can be used to power up the warp gates and such. Yes, they do have them. And they, like in the actual game, most of them anyway, lead down to the primary containment facility. Ooh, and here we have some blood kelp. Oddly enough, made out of bone blocks. And there is that one heck of a balancing act. A uh, piece of the aurora. Is that been? In, is that the aurora? Cause it's been impaled by that. This is not the aurora. Oh, there it is. Anyway, I have inadvertently taken you to portions of the blood kelp. So yeah. If you do play this in survival, the two things you'll want to find, and thankfully they are provided throughout the world. Well, the redstone blocks. Oop! There's an entrance to the lost river. And goal is um, the redstone blocks to power up the warp gate and similar things. Ooh, here we go. As well as armor. Now, for some reason, and I think I know why, gold armor is debatably the most useless armor in all of Minecraft, so it has not been retextured. So, yeah, this thing actually has no discernible eyes. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on back there. I don't think that's the Kara because, well, if that is the Warper, uh, it was it's immune to the Kara. The weird, extreme acne. Okay, now before I uh, actually show you the items in the Dirt Leviathan, I'm going to show you around the Aurora and that thing. Now, as you can see, this is incredibly massive. The inside, however, is not too detailed. And I'm actually happy for this. There are no cave crawlers. Because those dudes are... What? Okay, then. They're annoying. What's going... Oh, right. I think this thing backs onto an island or something. There we go. Why does that look like the doorway you see in some of the precursor uh, buildings, I guess? Hmm. Anyway, time to go inside. Let's see. I think originally I had to break some blocks to get in with the ultimate repulsion cannon known as my right hand. Okay, maybe not ultimate, but still pretty dang epic. Oh, and there's the uh, showcase area. 
right over there. I call it in the uh, book the show shroom. Now, if you're playing in survival, you may want to be careful about visiting here. You can't tell it right now, but I have um night vision engaged. It's usually pretty dark in here, and you can find lots of mobs. Oh, and being that this um world is mostly underwater, you're gonna you should expect a a surplus of drowned. Anyway, so yeah, here's. Mm, excuse me. Oh my gosh, pardon me. So, this is what I mean. The upper levels have yet to be textured. And given the complexity of this map, I really don't expect them to. They've done a really good job here. So, yeah. Anyway... It's truly incredible. And I'm thinking these are supposed to be those magma blocks, these weird things right here. That can be used to pull you down, or work the opposite way with soul sand to make a bubble elevator. Anyway. Dang, I really wonder what could have happened here. Just don't know. Let's see. We got a torqued out digiframmers, our mega spaz, redundancy pilers on the blink, and it looks like we bruised our boo boo. He's making the whole ass bit up. Wait, how'd I get here? One minute I was on the Aurora, the next, some random video clip from Spaced Invaders Place, and then I break the fourth wall, and I'm here. What the heck? But, I misspelled welcome. I do gr good grammaticals. So, anyway, this is the, as the sign says, hopefully it's spelled for the, sh the show shroom. I can say that three times fast. Anyway, so, this shows the, the different sets of armor and what they look like. I think this, the armor, or, Oh my gosh, that's number five from me. Uh, this one on the far left is the leather armor. Looks kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Next to it we have chainmail, which in my opinion kind of looks like SD303 without the red eyes. Here, which is I believe either the reinforced dive suit or the steel suit is the iron armor and not too much has changed with the gold armor except those gray bands on the that goes with the elbows as well as uh, the strange helmet that kind of looks like yellow jacket and on the left is the diamond armor kind of reminds me of a spacesuit or something now here we have some examples of how weapons and stuff have changed. The this one right here, I guess, is supposed to be the stone sword, and these two are the varying knives. The one in the middle being iron, and this one obviously being diamond. I think these two are supposed to be like lasers. This one being a mining laser or a welding tool. Wait, this is the welding tool, or the laser... I remember one, either the welding tool or the laser cutter requires a diamond to make. I think that's the laser cutter, and this is the uh, welding tool. This is uh, suppo are supposed to be shears, and these two items, like several others, have not changed so much in appearance rather than color. This one that looks kind of like a pocket lighter is... As you may guess, flint and steel. And this weird thing that counts like a grenade or landmine, I guess, is supposed to be... That's just a basic arrow. For some reason, the Turtle Master arrows... Dang, that is... Wow, really, really, really big. For some reason, the Turtle Master effect arrow has not yet been given a texture. Probably because the effect was created 
after this map was designed. And then I said that the bow was supposed to be like the, um, the old stasis rifle. I think that's actually like a propulsion or repulsion cannon. Some things that are required for further exploration in the Aurora, in the actual game. Now I'm going to show you something that you are that you will most likely cringe at. I mentioned that there's a uh, Reaper in here. Well, it just, it sort of looks like. Okay, that's odd. I placed this before, have the eggs in my inventory, and yet somehow I had to rebuild the armor stance. What the heck? So hopefully the hostile mobs are still on. So. If you're not up to scratch on your uh, Minecraft trivia, this is actually a um, an Elder Guardian spawn egg. You just you just have to see it. It's it's seriously ridiculous. Oh, that was anticlimactic. Give me a moment. And behold, the, it's a get out. Of here. Is this not the most ridiculous thing you have ever seen? Seriously, and it's, kind of, it's rather silly because in survival he will launch that one laser beam that gives you mining fatigue. I don't want to hug. Get away from me. The last time you gave someone a hug, you left out your um that thing. I don't want to make this, I don't want to make this too crude. Anyway. What? It's freaking me out. Anyway, I think that about wraps up this video. As soon as I can find my escape pod. Oh, there we go. Alrighty then. Hopefully this has been a successful episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you for part two. Like I said, I'm thinking of exploring the Grand Reef, and dang it, the Grand Reef, Jelly Shrooms, probably also doing a little bit more exploration into the back part of the Aurora. In any case, I am... I'm going to sign off here. Hope you all have a good rest of your day or night, depending. And I'll see you in part two. Or you'll see. We won't see each other. You'll hit with. Screw it. Goodbye.